All right, so I'm so excited that we're back with another Teach Me How. I'm ready to give you guys some more great information that's gonna help you learn how to develop these digital skills so that you don't have to pay people to do it. So we are on a mission, and I am here today with Regina, who I have known for a while, and she is a badass boss lady, and she is also the founder and lead consultant of her firm, Red Perspective. So all the information about her, don't forget, will be down in the YouTube captions. So you can see all of that great info, but welcome, Regina. I'm so excited to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I think this series is fantastic, allowing people to learn how to do these things themselves, especially starting out so they don't have to shell out all the dough. Yeah, um, so today I will be speaking to you all about how to develop your social media presence. Uh, social media can be very scary for so many people because they feel like there's a lot of intricacies that go into it and it definitely can get that far. But when you're starting out, it can be absolutely simple as long as you follow some basic guidelines and then develop your profiles from there. So I will start with talking to you about digital identity. So digital identity sounds it's pretty straightforward. It is who are you on these digital platforms? So it's allowing people who don't have the ability to read how you want to speak to them from a screen and being super clear about the voice and the messaging that you want to put forward. So voice is basically your personality. Are you fun? Are you serious? Are you teaching? These are uh, the different adjectives that will help you define who you are on these different platforms. And then tone sets the mood. It adds a little flavoring to your voice. So depending on your audience, depending on the situation you're speaking about, depending on the channel that you're posting on, you'll switch up your tone a little bit so people clearly understand the message that you're trying to convey on your social platforms. So of course, there are a plethora of social platforms that you can use. Depending on your business, you will identify which platform is best for you. That can be Instagram if you have a product-based business that will have beautiful photos that would accompany it, or even if you have a coaching business or something along those lines where you want to show the different community that you serve and the different ways that people are receiving your message and loving it. Um, if you are leadership consulting or something more in the corporate realm, LinkedIn is definitely going to be the place for you. Uh, Twitter can actually be great for all of that, specifically if you have really important information to share. In these times right now, Twitter is an actual lifeline for people to learn about new businesses and to be able to share positive and important information. Uh, and then of course, Facebook. Everybody should have a Facebook. You may not always use it, but everybody should have a Facebook, mainly because it links out to so many of these other platforms and it'll help you spread your message farther when we get into ads and different promoted um, promotional aspects. Um, and then of course, YouTube, this is where we are. So YouTube <laughs> is really important. Also, if you have um, very like video content, if you have interviews, if you have uh, just different things that would be really cool in video form that a still picture just would not give you enough. Totally mm -hmm. cool to get on YouTube for that. Um, so next we'll talk about community building. Uh, and I think community building is the biggest part, and Joy would probably agree, um, of your social media platform. Because once you identify who you are and how you're going to speak to the people, who are you speaking to? Mm -hmm. Who is your audience? So, And your audience doesn't always have to be who's going to pay for your services. It could be colleagues if you want to position yourself as a thought leader. It could be competitors so you can show them what they're up against. But of course, mainly you're trying to speak to the people who would be paying for whatever products or services you have to offer. So you want to make sure that you fully understand that community so you're providing them with content that they can engage in and want to learn more about you and what you do. So I have an example for community building uh, on Instagram specifically. 
So I want to share a social media platform with you all for a brand called Mess in a Bottle. So Mess in a Bottle is an expressive t-shirt brand where they put messages on these t-shirts, sweatshirts, bags, jackets, you name it, she puts messages on them and they come packaged in reusable bottles. What's really cool about Mess in a Bottle is her brand has been leveraged solely off of really strong community building. She made sure that she understood her community, what mattered to them, what they're speaking about, what really gets to the heart of them to keep them not only engaged, but interested in her products that express these things that they want to say and don't want, want to say in public. So she has amassed a following of over 122,000 followers after only being in business for three years, mainly because she's part of these important conversations. Right now, be a good human is a message that we all want to share to one another. She has these masks. We all have to wear masks. She has these really funny things. There's also a bunch of inspiring messages throughout her feed. She knows that these are the things that her community wants to learn about right now. This is what they want to be a part of. There has been um, a great array of the types of people who are on her page, the types of messages, the types of items, making sure that she fully understands this community that she built and absolutely speaks to them across the board. So Mess in a Bottle is a great example, even down to the babies. How cute is that? Mess in a Bottle is a great example of how you really get to the heart of who your audience is and make sure that you're speaking to them in a way that, that resonates. So how do you figure out your audience? Great question. Think about what it is that you're offering. So if you have a product that you think would be really necessary for school teachers, yes, school teachers are your audience, but that's super broad, especially on social media, because you're, you would be competing with different people who are offering products and services for school teachers across the board. You're just starting out. How do you narrow it down? Is it school teachers in a particular area? Is it school teachers that teach a particular subject? Is it school teachers that teach a, a particular grade level? really honing in on who your audience is and making sure that you are speaking directly to them, letting them know that you have a, a product or service that can solve a problem or issue that they have and make it fun. So another aspect of community engagement, um, community building is the actual engagement. You don't just want people to like your things and keep going. You want to make sure that you are keeping them engaged, you're asking questions, you are giving them something to be a part of. That's the whole point of the community. I hearken back to the mess in a bottle page that we just went through a second ago. On her page, every question has a CTA. CTA is short for call to action. And the call to action is not always buy this product that I'm, that I'm hawking to you at the moment. The CTA can be, how are you feeling right now? What's bringing you joy today? What is, you know, the challenging thing that you had to overcome this week? It really brings people across the internet, so across the globe, together under your post and your social media output to really come together and realize, I'm not alone in this. I'm doing this together. And there, your community grows. Um... Another thing that can be helpful for engagement outside of CTAs under your specific post, I'm sure, especially during quarantine, you guys have seen more IG lives than you have ever before in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I, every time I look down at my phone, someone else is going live and I'm asking why still again today. <laughs> It's crazy, but I absolutely think that for different brands, both personal and business brands, that going live on Instagram can be amazing for your engagement. The same way you can ask those questions under your post to get people to respond, these IG lives are almost an open forum for people to do that together. So it's another way of bringing people together and you can um, launch IG lives with other people 
and you can have your own conversation and then your followers are having a conversation in the chat. So it really is another great way to bring your audience together, your community together. You may annoy some people who are sick of IG lives, but it's fine. You'll make more people happy than you'll annoy. It's all good. Um, another example of that, uh, Facebook has the, the same platform, uh, I mean, the same capability. You can go ahead and go live with someone. You can go and speak on a particular topic. And it doesn't need to be an hour of you drunk. It's not a lecture. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be scheduled. These are all things that if you really feel like you can bring your community together for a particular conversation, that can also help boost your business, not just sales, but also brand recognition. Absolutely hop on one of these platforms with a friend by yourself, have these conversations and invite your community to join you and comment and engage in a really meaningful way. Um, Twitter chats were also good for this as well. As you all know, using particular hashtags keeps you absolutely in the know with what's going on and keeps you abreast of breaking news and things of that nature. So having a particular Twitter chat around a topic and using the same hashtag in the bottom, make sure that people can follow the information that you're sharing, the tools, tips, and resources that you're sharing, and ultimately the products and services that you'd like to offer. Um, and then live tweeting. We have not been to live events in so long. Do you guys remember concerts? Weren't they great? Um, <laughs> but when we do have, even if it's a virtual mm -hmm. event, which is our lives now, um, you can go ahead and have live tweeting. So for people who may not have bought tickets, people who may not have registered, or you want to get more people in the door once the event has already begun, start sharing tips some high line notes or some really good points that speakers are making with the hashtag for your event that brings in, of course, your, your already built in community, but more people who are interested in that topic and they get to learn more about you, they get to learn more about your event and ultimately always the end goal, the products and services that you wanna offer them. So now that you've done all of this to engage your audience, to build your community, and to get them to know all about who you are as a brand or a person, if it's a personal profile, um, and what you have to offer, how do you know if it's working? So here's where KPIs come in. KPI is short for Key Performance Indicators. This is up to you to understand what's important for you. Is it the engagement? Is it where people go after they learn about you? Is it um, how many likes or shares you got? Really understand what engagement on these different posts across these, across these different social media platforms are important to, and really needle moving for you, your business and your identity. Um, and then once you figure out what those actual indicators are, what are those numbers? What are the criteria? So if every post gets 10 likes and that makes you feel good, then that's your, then that's your goal. That's your analytics goal. If, you know, if it getting three different shares means that it puts you in front of three audiences who may not have known about you before, then that's a goal. So really sit down and understand what's important to you and identify what those numbers look like. And then with every social media post that you put forward, make sure that you're putting forward the best quality content that can get you to those numbers. Um, so now some tips to make your life a lot easier. Content calendars create them. Understand from the onset what you want to talk about and what that looks like. Are you sharing a video on Monday and then an infographic on Wednesday and then, you know, a quote meme on Friday? What does your content look like and what does your audience actually engage with? Map that out for at least two weeks. Have it set up so that you know exactly what's going out and monitor it as it's going out. You may have thought that a meme on Wednesday was cool, but you realize that people really like memes on Fridays. Really understand what's happening with your platforms and be able to optimize and change that in real time. That's the beautiful thing about digital marketing. It's all numbers. It's either working or it's not. So you have the opportunity to switch and optimize in the middle and nobody will be mad at you about it. Um, another thing that's really good with these content calendars are these platforms that schedule your posts. Post scheduling is a gift, um, especially if you are mapping out longer than two weeks. 
having it, it's really set it and forget it, it will change your life, especially if you're someone that feels like social media is time consuming and you don't want it to get into the fray of everything else that you have going on. Um, I typically use Hootsuite, which is a great platform, but there are so many Sprout Social, um plenty you can google they have free accounts they have low cost accounts where you can put all of your platforms in place your content in down to <clears throat> down to your caption and your hashtags set it and forget it just go back in see how people are responding see if you need to move some things around but for the most part because you've created your content calendar you have an idea of what you want to post you set it and you can just optimize from there Another tip, definitely develop hashtags for all of your posts. So depending on the post, you will wanna use a hashtag that's related to whatever topic it is you're discussing, but you also want to create hashtags that are specifically yours, that are specifically related to your business and what you're offering so that as you continue to use that hashtag and you're building your community you're building your digital presence that hashtag becomes its own thing and what you're known for so while you are incorporating hashtags created by and used by other people you still have yours in there so that you're growing as they're growing as well another great thing about hashtags is that on instagram specifically you can follow certain hashtags the same way you follow profiles you can follow hashtags so anything that comes up under that hashtag will show up in people's feeds and that's another way to grow your community your reach and your brand recognition um another tip is about video so video is really great and it is blowing up everywhere, but specifically LinkedIn is having a video crush at the moment. So if LinkedIn is one of your platforms, short form videos that are informative are really cool. So not as long as a sizzle reel, which is usually somewhere between two to three minutes, but a short video that is an intro to an article or an intro to something that you want to share. Those are doing great on LinkedIn and getting amazing engagement around that leadership corporate thought space um, and can really help to build your platform there. Of course, YouTube is all video. Um, and Instagram is where you can kind of play with um, your video and your photos and your memes and all of that beautiful stuff. One last one, utilize your Instagram story. Instagram story is amazing for both brands and personal profiles because this is where you get to loosen up a bit. If your actual feed where your posts are going to stay forever, the internet is forever, don't forget it where your posts are going to stay forever that's where you put your very focused content calendar here's what i want you to know kind of stuff the feed is where you get to go a little crazy you get to share things from other people who are like-minded or other brands who are like-minded you get to share some personal behind the scenes stuff that's where you use your phone to capture you out on your wall can you find something that's related to your brands um and you're able to just be a little looser i look at stories as a behind the scenes kind of thing so you look at instagram stories as a way to show yes the feed is the brand but this is who we are on a good day you know this is who we are when we're just relaxing so mm -hmm. definitely utilize um instagram stories to show that side of you and your brand because it really allows people to feel like they know you and of course that grows community as well mm -hmm. i hope this was helpful yeah that's awesome and i think you know i think it does definitely hit like an overwhelming point when people are setting all of this up because it's like how many social profiles can you realistically manage and right. cultivate so i think i liked the idea how you kind of profiled each one and said like this typically works for these kinds of businesses mm -hmm. or people because i think you know when you're starting out you do have to choose like you yeah, can't absolutely. do it all to start it out across the board is just going to drive you insane it is really, really important to definitely like identify this is the platform where I think my work is best suited and where I think my audience is. So that's where that community building and audience identification comes into play. Where's my audience? You know, if you're if they're teachers and they are on and they're on Facebook, then that is where you need to put your energy. 
you know, mm -hmm. if they are consumers and they're a younger demographic, you need to be on Instagram. Uh, you know, and then there's also, and of course there's Pinterest if you're, if you have food. Pinterest is it, you know, <laughs> if you are selling something in preteens, get on TikTok, you know, there's like, mm -hmm. there are all of these different things, but that's why that, that audience identification and community development is so, so key. So you know where to start. And then based on what happens on those platforms, build it out from there. Do you think like for somebody who is in that startup season and they've got their good or service or app or whatever they want to sell, like, would there be value in somebody buying like an hour of your time? Like somebody like you to sit down and say like, you tell me as an expert what I should do. Like, is that uh, something you recommend? I, you know, I, I always ask for people to do some of that work themselves first. And if they feel like they haven't nailed it down, then of course, come and reach out to a consultant who can support you. But your this uh, business or personal brand or whatever it is that you're lifting is your baby. So nobody understands it like you. So even if you do ultimately wind up going with a consultant, there's a degree of this work that you should have done already in advance to be able to bring to the consultant for them to help you build it out. Um, I think that that's why I, I call myself an idea midwife because people come to me with their ideas and then I bring them to life. But the idea is yours. It's yours and the vision is yours. You know where you ultimately want to go with this work. No one starts out and says, hey, I have this idea and I want to keep it an idea. You know what you want to do with this. So when you bring that to a consultant, you say, here's where we are and here's where I want to go. It's up to them to fill in the gaps. So some of that work still has to be done in the I had goosebumps. That was inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> inspiring. Um, I know what a midwife has meant to me personally. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, okay, so, and then my last question I think a lot of people have is like, how much time is a realistic amount of time to spend every day working on social media? Like answering comments or mm -hmm. engaging or liking posts or commenting or like, what's realistic? Do not spend more than an hour on your social media, especially if you have set up your content calendar. If you have set up your content calendar, if you have done your, you know, you've done your scheduling, you are all set. You are only going in there to check. You are only going in there to respond to comments. I, for the social media platforms um, that I manage for the people that I work with, I go in three times a day. There's an early morning check there's a midday check and then there's an evening check a because there are so many of them i'd go nuts if i did it otherwise uh <laughs> and, b, and b because the time zones are different and people mm -hmm. use these platforms differently so they're coming in and responding to things at different times in different ways so i think finding like maybe that 8 a.m and then that 1 p.m and then that five ish six ish that gives you like this full breath where people don't feel like they're commenting and you're ignoring them, where people do feel like they're being heard. You go in, you can just go in and like things. You can go in and actually respond. You know, whatever it is that you feel like you um, want to do to feel, make people feel seen and understood and heard under your posts. Um, I think that that's important. I like that. Okay. And I think it's good that, you know, you frame it in the sense that you are building a community. I think a lot of people think a social media is like either a necessary evil or it's a means to an end. And right. these people are a bunch of sheep that I'm going to get to buy my yeah, product. No, they will not become, they will not <laughs> lean in into what you have to offer until you make them feel like they're a part of it. I think that that mm -hmm. is the key to any successful brand on social media. They need to feel involved. That brand that I showed you a second ago, People will comment, like she will put up a meme. You've seen, a, you saw a few of them. She'll put up a meme and people will say, will this be on a t-shirt? And she'll try it out on a t-shirt. You know, they feel heard. They feel mm -hmm. a part of the process. They feel like, okay, wait, this is our brand too. And that is what builds brand loyalty. And community. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I think that was great. I think there's a lot of work people have to do, but I think there is a lot of potential in social media. I think if people can learn how to use it well, I love the idea that it's, they own it still. Yeah. Even when they hire somebody like you, they still own the yep. process and the representation. That's powerful and important. It's your baby. It's your baby. Yeah. We're just, we're just here to help guide you, guide it to growth. 
Awesome. All right. Well, all of Regina's info is again in the YouTube caption. If you're interested in hitting her up on social, getting more business ideas from her, obviously she has a wealth of knowledge and experience <laughs> um, to be able to help brands, you know, birth these great visions and ideas and put action to it. So I'm so grateful that you're here. It was just good to see your face of again. Course. I know it was so good to see you. So thank you so much. <laughs> and I, hope, I hope it was helpful for you guys. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks.